the Sony 12 to 24 f 2.8 G Master, the unicorn lens, quite possibly one of my favorite lenses ever that I would never own. Sony 12 to 24 f 2.8 G Master, one of my favorite lenses ever. What's good, y'all? Terry Warfield. Yo, I hope you're having a great day so far. If this is your first time here, a big fat welcome to you. And if you're part of the fam, you're part of the squad, you came back, yo, welcome back. Before we move forward, if you are not subscribed to this channel, if you're into like lens reviews, photography, filmmaking, editing tips, tutorial, stuff like that, make sure you hit subscribe right now. And who's gonna be the first to like this video? Is it you? You gonna be the first? Who's gonna do it? Do it right now, yo. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. I know why you're here today. The Sony 12 to 24 F 2.8 G Master. This bad baby is $3,000. And like I said in the intro, quite possibly one of my favorite lenses I've ever tested. Now, before we move on, I gotta tell you, like if you're looking for like a spec driven review, if you one of them spec heads, this is not the video for you. I like to talk about lenses from my perspective things that are important to me. And I hope that, you know, we kind of cross on some of those things. This is an ecosystem defining lens. You cannot find a 12 to 24 millimeter F 2.8 constant aperture zoom lens anywhere. And on top of that, it's a G master. So you already know you're getting the best image quality. Like it's just, it's just so good, man. I had to sit in on a Sony press briefing before the lens came out, which I must admit was quite boring. This lens and all the technology are really pushing the limits of what are possible when it comes to making a lens. So I'm gonna leave the official link to Sony's website if you want all of those nitty gritty details. Now, first thing is who is this lens for in my opinion? This lens is for people who are into either architecture, real estate photography, maybe landscape photography or astrophotography. Now they do have other ultra wide angle zoom lenses. You have 14 to 24s, 10 to 18s, etc. But ain't nobody giving it to you with a constant f 2.8 aperture. And that's the reason why it costs so damn much. But anyways, let's get into the stuff that matters, right? The first thing that's important to me is overall size, weight, handling, stuff like that. This is not a small lens. This thing is almost two pounds. Now, comparatively speaking, are there lenses that are bigger? Absolutely. Are there other ultra wide lenses that are smaller? Absolutely. But again, got to remember F 2.8 constant aperture is not easy to do and keep it in a lens like this that's relatively small and compact. So size wise, it's comparable to like the 24 to 70 F 2.8 G Master, the 16 to 35 F 2.8 G Master. You're going to notice them when you're carrying this lens around. Now, I for one like big lenses, so it's not a big deal to me. I mean, I got to use these biceps and all this weightlifting I do, might as well put it to some type of good use. But I don't really mind the weight, I don't really mind the size, but if you have smaller hands and you get fatigued easily, it's something you may want to consider, right? Let's move on to the construction. Same G Master construction, we love, we expect. You get the same customizable button on the side, autofocus, manual focus switch. There is no aperture ring because this is a zoom lens. You have a short throw zoom ring, Focus ring is nice and smooth. And it's, you know, it's G Master quality. Now, a few notables I need to let you know real quick. Because of this huge bulbous front element, which is one of the things that makes this lens so special, by the way, you can't really put an ND filter on here or a traditional like lens hood. This lens does have the hood built into it. You don't remove it. It does have a cap that comes with it that sits on top. The good thing about the cap is you can put it on in any orientation. So you don't have to like sit there and try to like do all these mathematical equations to get the freaking cap on. Because the front element sticks out so much and it's so curved, you can't get a traditional ND filter on there. So what Sony did is in the box, they include a template to cut your own ND filters, or I'm sure uh, other third parties are going to step up and start making them. However, that to me presents a slight issue, right? And I, I presume it may present an issue for you also. If you are doing like run and gun photography, long exposure photography, 
filmmaking, stuff like that. Having to like take the lens off the body to put an ND filter on there or a different strength ND filter on there is totally not practical. Now this is not the first lens to do this, but just the consideration you got to think about. This is a big deal to me because I do a lot of run and gun stuff, but your mileage may vary. Just keep that in mind. And then like I said, the rest of it is just typical G Master quality. I'm a big fan of huge front elements on the front of lens. As you know, it just screams, hey bro, I'm a professional. I'm a professional. Last thing, even though it is heavy, I was able to mount it on the Fayu Tech AK2000 and I was able to balance it with no problems and run it with no problems. Anyways, next thing, moving on to autofocus. Out of all the G Master lenses I've tested, this is probably the best when it comes to autofocus. And I, I really don't have a lot to say because it just freaking works. It does have four linear XD motors in here because there's a lot of glass in here. Uh, and those, those motors are responsible for moving all of this glass back and forth. And it is internal zoom. Also, you know, it doesn't extend or anything like that. But you got to think, man, they had to put the best of the best in here because if you mount this on like an A9 II, which demands blazing quick autofocus, it got to be able to keep up. It's accurate. It doesn't miss. It's a good thing where you don't have to talk about autofocus. Like other G Masters I reviewed, I've had to make it a point to take a few minutes to talk about them because the autofocus systems weren't perfect. On this one, it literally, it just works. I don't have nothing bad to say. It's fast, reliable, quick. Moving on, image quality. Now image quality, we got quite a bit to talk about, right? Now I'm gonna, you know, kind of go, give you this disclaimer again. I got all tongue twisted. I'm not about to go through a measure corner sharpness and all of that stuff. It's a freaking G Master. G Masters are of the sharpest lenses ever made. This one is no exception. Even at 12 millimeters, all the way throughout the focal range, at f2.8, razor sharp, I mean tack sharp images. Not too many other companies have figured out how to make a ultra wide zoom lens this freaking sharp. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on sharpness because it is what you expect from a G Master. What I do want to go over are the differences between 12 to 24. I have a short vlog test for you. Let me do that real quick. All right, y'all, let's get this vlog piece popped off. It is hot in this car, but this is at 12 millimeter and my shoulder is tight already because this lens is heavy, but this is the widest the lens can go and you can basically see everything, right? Let's go to 14. Now, the reason I wanted to do 14 is because the Sigma 14 to 24 is another ultra wide lens is that two millimeters a big deal? That's totally up to you, but this is 14 millimeters. In my opinion, still plenty wide. Now this is 16. For all of y'all that love the Sony 16 to 35 or may be thinking about that, it is sweat dripping on my face. 16 millimeters, I mean, it's still pretty wide. Let's go to 20. Okay, this is 20 millimeters. And then lastly, let's go to 24, which is typically where I'm vlogging at. This is 24 millimeter right here. I'm typically using the G Master 24 millimeter for all of my vlogging stuff, but I just love how this lens, even though it is heavy, it's got all of your vlogging focal lengths covered. Whether you wanna go all the way to 12, or if you wanna go all the way back in to 24, or any of those focal ranges in the middle, like 14, 16, 18, 20, like, yo, it's got it all covered, plus at f2.8. Let's get out of here. The other thing I really wanted to point out, usually with ultra wide zooms, such as the 12 to 24 Sony f4, that lens suffered from a ton of distortion at 12 millimeters and also a ton of vignetting at 12 millimeters. This lens, even when shooting at 12 freaking millimeters, all of the lines are straight. And that is wild from a ultra wide zoom. Now, one thing I did have to get used to is shooting at ultra wide focal lens. I'm typically at 24 millimeters or I'm at 50 and above, right? So 12 millimeters is very tricky. 14 millimeters is also very tricky in case you guys are wondering, should you get the Sigma? But it's a very tricky focal length because if the camera is off axis, so if you're leaning forward or maybe you're leaning backwards, if the lens isn't level, then it, it's gonna easily distort either top to bottom or side to side. It's just the, the nature of the physics of an ultra wide lens. All of them suffer from the same thing. Where the Sony really excels at is when the lens is level, when you get a shot framed up, your lines and everything are good, how straight the lines are. This is super ideal for people who are in the architecture because typically with a wide angle lens, you would have like buildings converging on each other. Uh, you would have lines that look kind of like warpy or kind of circular almost. And this does not exhibit any of that. Even at 12 millimeters, 
which is why the next thing I want to show you is just the difference in perspective of 12 and 24. 24 gives you a wide look, right? But it's almost like a natural look. It's, it's just like a wider field of view than we're used to. 12 millimeter, however, the, the best word I could use to describe it is just epic it's dramatic it pushes everything out from the center of the frame it makes everything look bigger than what it really is you can get some very very interesting perspectives and i've learned to love this ultra wide look when i was testing it out because i've never been able to get images like this from anything this thing is sharp as a tech and it really controls distortion it really controls flaring one thing sony has even advertised with this lens is the ability to shoot right into the sun and get dope looking sun stars the last thing I want to touch on with image quality, bokeh. Now you can get pretty close. The minimum focus distance is, uh, I forgot, I'm going to put it on the screen, but you can get pretty close. Not like macro close, but close enough to really magnify your subjects and create some separation. Now at 12 millimeters, it's going to be very hard to get any type of depth of field without things looking kind of stupid. But if you punch in a 24 millimeters and you get kind of close to the subject at f2.8, you could get some pretty shallow background blur. And surprisingly, the background blur coming out of this lens when you do get close enough is actually pretty decent. At the end of the day, it's a very, very versatile, sharp, well-controlled, distortion is well-controlled, chromatic aberration is well-controlled. I've shot into like directly into the sun and haven't noticed any real issues with fringe or anything like that. I'm super impressed with the image quality. I don't really know how comfortable I would be walking around with a $3,000 lens. That's just me. Why would you buy this lens over, let's just say the Sony 12 to 24 F4 or the Sigma 14 to 24, which is F2.8 at less than half of the cost of the G Master because it's a 3,000 freaking dollars. The Sony 12 to 24 F4 is 1,800, but we just gonna act like that lens don't exist because it's, I've never tested one personally, but from what I've seen, it's not impressive, okay? But anyways, Sigma 14 to 28 F2.8 lens is a very compelling offer compared to the G Master. Now, I haven't owned that lens either. However, I have watched enough reviews to kind of get an idea of what that lens brings to the table. From what I've seen, you get about 75% of the performance at less than half the cost. And I think for most people, the Sigma will probably be the smarter buy because 14 millimeters is still plenty wide you still get an f2.8 constant aperture. Um, from what I've seen, it's not as sharp as the Sony, but also this is a $3,000 G Master. And realistically, the Sigma is probably more than sharp for most people. The thing you really gotta think about is you're losing two millimeters at the wide end. So if that's important to you, that's totally up to you. Um, for me, I don't think it would be a big deal. I'm not really like a super ultra wide type person, but I can understand how for some people that two millimeters could be important. Um, is that worth not having what the G Master offers? With the G Master, you are getting best in class image quality, sharpness, distortion control, weather sealing, crazy fast autofocus that can even hang with the Sony A9 II. And the list goes on with all the other G Master benefits. If you want the best of the best, the creme de la creme of ultra wide zooms, this is the lens you gotta get. But if you are okay, with getting almost this level of performance, and I say almost loosely because in my opinion, there's nothing that can compete with this. But from a cost perspective, for most people, the Sigma 14 to 24 is a very compelling option if you're okay with not getting the other two millimeters at the wide end. Um, for me, I don't think that I will buy this lens because for me, it just doesn't fit into my camera bag. And I said that at the beginning of this video, even though I think this lens is absolutely 100% revolutionary there's nothing like it i just don't have a need for a 12 millimeter lens i think like something like a 16 to 35 or 24 to 70 would be a much better fit for me but i can't say that because it's not a good fit for me that it won't be a good fit for you also i'm not saying that you shouldn't buy this lens again if you want the best that sony has to offer you want the best ultra wide zoom out there and you can afford it and those advantages mean something to you, then by all means, yo, this is the lens to grab. But it's definitely some things to think about when it comes to if you wanna drop three bands on a camera lens, because like, for example, the A7S III is only 3,500. So for another $500, you get a whole ass camera. 
I'm just giving you perspective. But anyways, I would love to know y'all thoughts, man. I absolutely love this lens. I got to send it back to Sony. I don't want to, but I have to send it back. But uh, I would love to know y'all thoughts and opinions on the Sony 12 to 24 millimeter F2.8 G Master. That's all I got for you today, man. Peace and chicken grease. I'm out. I'm tired of talking. It's late. I got to go. I'm out. Peace.